In this video, I will show you how I have created a VR zombie game prototype in under 30 hours, and that you can do it as well. How? Well, we are going to use pre-made assets from the asset store. But won't it just be an asset flip, and can you really make a VR game in under 30 hours? Well, stick around to find out and decide on your own. Hi, I'm Peter, and welcome to Sunny Valley Studio Tutorials. When I started my game dev journey, I thought that I had to wear all the hats myself, writing code, creating art, you name it. This led to unfinished games that often lacked polish. Great games are usually made by teams of people, where each person has unique skills to support each other. But one alternative is to use pre-made assets to make your playable prototype. Next, you can ask others for support and funding so that you can make your own assets for your game. I will be using 8 assets from the asset store to make my game prototype. Now, this video is sponsored by Unity. VR games can be incredibly immersive. I remember the first time I played Arizona Sunshine when a zombie approached me and I actually panicked a bit. I really felt like there was a zombie in front of me, although I knew I was just playing a game. That is why I decided to create my own VR zombie game. My game loop is very basic. Player uses a gun to kill zombies, but we have a limited ammo, so we need to look for those boxes containing magazines. To escape, we need to find gas for a truck, which drives the need for exploration in the level, and when we find it, we'll finish this level. Shooting zombies is the main idea behind the game, so let's implement this first. That is where Hurricane VR package will come in handy. It implements a VR gun shooting that I can reuse in my game. I have added the gun to my own test scene, where we have some bottles to shoot at. Whoa, that's not how a gun should work. I have added some effects to make the shooting feel good, the muzzle flash effect and a heat effect using particle system. These comes from Polygon Particle Pack by Synthi, from which I will be using some other effects later on. Equally important is the sound feedback, so bottles breaking or bullet hitting the wall all needs to have some sound effect. This took me about 3 hours to create. The next thing is the game loop implementation, and for that I need to have some extra 3D models. I have grabbed the Polylite survival bundle. It contains some nice looking survival items, but right now what I need is a gas can that the player will be able to search for. It also has some low poly guns with separate magazines and movable parts, which is great because not all low poly models have those details. First, I have swapped the default Hurricane VR gun for a low poly one to better fit my game idea. To reload the weapon, player will need to use their other hand, and in a VR game, those kinds of interactions are really what makes the game feel immersive. We can also holster our gun, and I have reused the same logic to hold spare magazines. I want the gameplay to be about collecting fuel, so I have added an indicator near the vehicle so the player knows what they need to use the vehicle. And when we add the fuel, we are going to fade out the screen and finish the game or this level. This part took me another 3 hours to create. Last part of the zombie shooting mechanic is adding the zombies so that we can have something to shoot at. For this, I have used the Toon Zombie Pack Asset. First, I have added the, the animated zombie enemies to my shooting scene and coded the logic for us to be able to shoot the zombies using our gun, which took me about another 3 hours. I have added some blood particles to make the shooting more satisfying, I have also implemented the death animation and there is a nice ground hit sound effect added. Making all those animations work together took me another three and a half hour. Before adding some AI logic for the zombies, I have decided to first create a playable level and for that I have used idyllic city ruins asset. I have created a small enclosed space, 
and preparing the level and baking the lights took me about two hours. I have placed the escape van right at the start of the level. Now we need to have the zombie chase the player and attack when they are close. To make zombies move I have used a star pathfinding project asset. It can create a navigation grid so that the zombies will be able to reach the player. Now chasing is not everything, we have to make zombies act differently based on the distance from the player and to implement that I have used behavior designer asset. I have created the logic for the zombies to stay idle, chase and attack player based on some conditions and this asset is great because we can visually see how the AI is behaving. I have made sure that the zombies can attack and kill the player. I have also added some dust particles inside of the buildings to make them seem more natural. Again, audio is very important, so I have added reverb zone so that shooting inside the building sounds much different than shooting outside of it. Implementing it took me about another hour. Now, I have placed the gas can at the end of my level so that the player will need to go through the whole level to reach it and to be able to finish the game. Now, in VR games, efficiency is quite important. That's why I have decided to split the zombie into groups so that we can trigger different groups so that not all enemies are active at once. This again took me about two hours to create. To save data about my game I have decided to use easy save asset. I have the number of bullets left in the gun as well as the number of magazines attached to the player's belt. So when we transition to the next scene, which actually is my test scene because I have no other level, we are going to have the same state of our equipment for our player. But this was basically it to make the game playable. So let's test it. Okay, so first thing is we pick up the gun and we can start killing zombies and it really feels pretty good. In this wider area we have to fight a big group of zombies which can provide a bit of a challenge to a player. Next we can collect the fuel and pick up some extra ammo and rest a bit. Because the last thing is to fuel the car and I have some zombies being spawned near the car so that the ending is a bit more interesting. And after we deliver the fuel, the screen fades and this is the end of the game. Overall, it took me about 29 and a half hour to create the game using those assets. If you want to check out the, this game, I will post a Windows playable version on my itch.io page. Just a warning, it might not be the most efficient version, I will try to improve it later on. So, as you have seen, using pre-made assets really helped me to quickly prototype the gameplay that I had in mind for my game. Now, is it an asset flip if we publish our game in this state? Well, maybe, but if you have something playable, it is much easier to get funding and support for your game so that you can create your very own unique assets. Thanks a lot for watching this video, see you in another one. Take care. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I can pick myself up and fly to space. That's kind of a feature, I guess. Or a bug.